We'll have the chance for more strong thunderstorms across parts of Florida as we get ready to close out the work week. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and in this video, we are going to talk about that, especially through Central Florida, the opportunity for more strong thunderstorms. Really, as we get into Friday and close out the work week, we are still watching the potential as well for some pretty heavy rain in South Florida. So if you are looking for the update for the entire Florida Peninsula. As we covered that on this channel as well, you can scrub across the time codes. I'll keep those time codes in the description as well. And then, of course, it's hurricane season. So we're going to look into the tropics and take a look to see if there's any development over the next seven days. Here we go. The severe weather threat really tries to ramp up again on Friday. And there's a lot of the Florida Peninsula included the panhandles there through Jacksonville into Central Florida. Orlando, we are in that as well, towards St. Cloud, Miko into Melbourne, Apopka, Eustis, Mount Dora, Daytona Beach, and into Orange City, Deltona, the land. We are all in that risk for severe weather. And again, I will widen out the future radar and show you the entire Florida Peninsula in just a minute or so, focusing now on Central Florida again for that future radar for the rest of Thursday. So this is going to start on Thursday at 5 o'clock. We're going to have storms around. I don't think they're going to be as rocking as last night. Again, we had some damage in parts of Brevard County uh, near Port St. John, near Patrick Space, Space Force Base. That's a mouthful. But uh, National Weather Service checking that out. There's 10 o'clock, and then there's 6 o'clock on your Friday morning. So I think once we get into tonight, Thursday night, and then into early Friday morning, we are nice and quiet. There's 6 o'clock in the morning, just a few passing clouds. Otherwise, we are golden. There's lunchtime. I think we're still pretty good. Maybe a stray couple of downpours trying to bubble back up. Look at that. Even by 4 o'clock, the high-resolution future radar here still keeping most of central Florida dry. Notice, though, we do have a lot of rain north of the banner here, up top of the banner towards Jacksonville into the panhandle. I will show you that if you're interested in the panhandle towards Jacksonville in just one second. But then look at all that. All of that mess coming in from the panhandle and in from Georgia then kind of pushes through. So we're talking potentially even later on into the evening. So now we're beyond dinner time. So evening, late into the evening, that's 9 o'clock. You see that there, a nice cluster of pretty strong thunderstorms. Back again, closer to the I-95 corridor, and then into Brevard County as well. Look at that, even still by 11 o'clock. You see those darker purples here. That's where we're talking about the potential for some very heavy rain. A lot of it offshore by that point, but look at that. The tornado threat is not high. We were talking about this on Wednesday that the tornado threat was not high and you saw what happened we had that damage there for Brevard County when the east coast sea breeze is in play and that's when it fires up with the heating of the day and it gets pinned like it did on Wednesday even when the overall environment is not tornado-y to say so to speak we can still get that low-level area of rotation that low-level spin induced by that boundary getting there so again on Friday, while the tornado threat is not going to be high, I do want everyone to pay attention here and to make sure that you have a way to get your warnings, especially right along I-95 and then especially into Brevard County as well, right where that sea breeze gets pinned. Some of the high resolution here, I'm looking at a little concerning. You get these little kidney bean-shaped guys that are isolated. They always have the opportunity to produce a tornado. So again, tornado threat not high. I want to be clear. I don't want to freak anybody out, but... It's not going to be zero right along the I-95 corridor, right along the Atlantic coast where that sea breeze kind of gets pinned. We're at 92 on Friday for Sanford, 92 in Orlando, 92 in Kissimmee through St. Cloud, Holopah, hanging around 90 as well in Melbourne, 90 degrees in Titusville. As a lot of those storms, as I showed you, kind of hang out, hang tight until later on into the evening. So we're going to take it back to Thursday for a second. I want to show you the statewide view here in this Florida forecast. And you kind of see what happens. Note all of the rain through the Bahamas, into the Turks and Caicos, into the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of that kind of pushes through. Everybody pretty much starting out dry from about Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, Pensacola, Port and St. Joe, where we do have the rain to start your day on Friday morning. Look at all the rain through the Keys, some very heavy rain, into Miami, Fort Lauderdale, through Fort Pierce as well. It'll be more scattered towards Fort Pierce. And then watch what happens. Here's where our strong thunderstorm threat comes through. And again, everybody from about right in through here is highlighted for that risk for severe weather. So let me clear out all of that mess here, and I'll show you the high-resolution radar again. So that's 3 o'clock on Friday. Note we're popping some pretty strong thunderstorms uh, closer to Tallahassee, back toward Pensacola, west of Jacksonville as well. 
hanging out towards Polk County, Davenport, uh, into Lakeland, Miami. We're going to likely get some of that heavy rain as well. And then you clearly see where things kind of consolidate. We have some more scattered storms in and around Fort Lauderdale, Fort Pierce, Stewart, and then around the Orlando area, right along the Space Coast, moving off of the first coast by this point, but some pretty rock and thunderstorms continuing late into your Friday evening. So again, Friday is a good time to have your warnings. If you don't have the Pinpoint Weather app, it is free. It is a great tool to kind of track those storms, your location. There's lightning detection, all that stuff. If you're watching from somewhere other than the Orlando area and don't typically get News 6, this will still help you out as well. You're going to get those push alerts. You're going to get all that stuff when lightning is around and when there are warnings issued for your location if you, if you have the geotargeting turned on. Speaking of apps, best hurricane app out there is the Pinpoint Hurricane app. And again, you don't have to be from Central Florida or Florida in general to use it. It is... Uh, tied to all things tropics there's great updates on there from the meteorologists at new six and from the national hurricane center so it's the best app out there the good news is there's nothing to track right now formation chance at about zero percent it is at zero percent over the next seven days we do have these thunderstorms here big time flood threat continues for the turks and caicos into cuba jamaica uh haiti as well central america Intertropical convergence zone, that's what the thunderstorms are developing on. That's the trade winds coming off of Africa uh, and then coming out of um, uh, south of the equator in the southern hemisphere as well. They help to fire up these thunderstorms. No indications from anything that we are going to see any of that develop and flare up. So I think we're going to be okay there in the short term over the next few days. Again, really no indications there. I would not be surprised if the Hurricane Center maybe highlights something out here, but there is a lot of wind shear. And you can see that evident by how you have the thunderstorms right there. Notice how, let me get my little telestrations off, but notice how it's kind of stretched out way up here. That is evident of a lot of wind shear. So if anything found something it liked, it would be really, really hard to develop. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, make sure you have a way to get some warnings on for the weather. On Friday, because of that opportunity for some strong storms. Again, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing, and we will catch you next time.